Winnie the Pooh's Thanksgiving by Bruce Talkington, illustrated by John Kurtz. But where can he be? Rabbit said in his most frustrated, I really want to know voice. It was the question that was in the mind of everyone standing at Winnie the Pooh's front door. The thoroughly frazzled rabbit once again rapped loudly on the door, which continued to stand unopened no matter how vigorously he applied his knuckles. Tigger was sitting back on his tail with his face flattened against the glass of Pooh's window. There's nothing moving in there, he informed the others. That doesn't mean a great deal, rumbled Eeyore from where he was seated on a nearby patch of grass. Not moving is one of the things Pooh Bear does best. Next to snoring. And eating honey, added the little Roo excitedly. Isn't that right, Mom? Yes, dear, Kanga said as she smiled down at him and gently straightened his hair with her hand. Why would Pooh ask us here if he were somewhere else, whistled Gopher, scratching his head. Piglet stood, wringing his very small hands worriedly. Oh dear, he sighed. I do hope he's all right. Now let's not jump to conclusions, Kanga spoke up gently, and Tigger wondered why ever not, because jumping was something he thoroughly enjoyed. But he supposed conclusions must be a little like Rabbit. They're not particularly pleased when people jump at them. If I remember correctly, Kanga continued, Pooh Bear simply asked us to meet him. He didn't mention where. Very nice of him, too, remarked Eeyore. He obviously didn't want us to feel bad if we couldn't find the right place, so he kept the location a secret. But we're making progress, hooted Tigger. We know for sure it isn't exactly here. And he pointed to the door. Now, Rabbit sighed, if we could only think of the place where Pooh is. Perhaps you just did, rumbled Eeyore. Pooh was certainly thinking about something when he called us together. And Pooh Boy always does his best head work, continued Tigger. In his very own thoughtful spot, finished Piglet. And that is exact tackly where they found Winnie the Pooh high atop the grassy knoll with its spectacular view of the hundred acre wood and the beautiful blue sky hanging high above it, where Pooh loved to sit and think. It was the sitting in such a special place that was important, after all, not the thinking. Therefore, it was no surprise at all when Pooh was found up there doing precisely that, sitting and looking thoughtful, and there was no doubts as to what Pooh was being thoughtful about. It was all spread out on a blanket before him. Pooh's pantry must have been completely emptied because everything sweet and tasty had been toted from his house to the grassy knoll and arranged to look its most delicious. I'm so very glad you've come, sighed Winnie the Pooh happily. I don't think this food could have waited much longer. And neither could I, he added with a smile. Then let's not waste a moment more, announced Rabbit. And they all sat down to eat. I'm very glad to see you at last, said Pooh. I hope I haven't brought too much to eat. No such thing as too many eats when eatin' is the name of the game, chuckled Ticker as he happily rubbed his paws together. Is eating the only reason you called us together, Pooh Bear? asked Owl. Called you together where? responded Pooh, tucking his tongue carefully into the corner of his mouth as he pulled the stopper on a fresh crock of honey because, as everyone knows, a stopper cannot be properly pulled if a tongue is not tactfully tucked. Why, called us here, Pooh squeaked Roo. Did I do that? said Pooh, surprised by the idea that he waited an extra second or two before pouring an extra large dollop of honey into his mouth. You certainly did, answered Gopher, and what we want to know is why you did it. Not that it wasn't an excellent idea, Pooh, dear, Kanga added gently. Well, murmured Pooh in a thoughtful sort of voice as he gently tugged on an ear with his honey-smeared paw. It must have begun this morning when I sat down for breakfast. Pooh explained how he was suddenly very much aware of how special a breakfast could be because, like so very many things, sunsets and birthdays, surprises and nap times, hugs and extra dessert, a breakfast was more than just today. It was an always-there-when-a-bear-needed-it sort of thing. 
You mean you were grateful, Pooh? asked Piglet in a very quiet voice when his friend had finished. Why, yes, Piglet, smiled Pooh. That's it exactly. And it was such a wonderful thank you very much feeling and so very, very large that I knew it was something I had to share with those I'm most grateful for. And what sort of those do you mean, Pooh? wondered Al. Why, you all, of course, exclaimed Pooh. My very best and dearest friends. Well, sniffed Rabbit, I'm certainly grateful that you thought of it. And what are you grateful for, Piglet? Pooh inquired politely as he put his arm around his friend's very small shoulders. Well, began Piglet nervously, and then continued in a rush. For a very small animal I have a great deal to be grateful for. And having a lot to be grateful for is, when you come right down to it, a lot to be grateful for, Piglet finished quite out of breath. When the question of gratitude was put to Rabbit, he explained that what he was primarily thankful for, besides his many very good friends, of course, was that a seed had the extremely good sense to sprout when he planted it in his garden. I'm grateful that the ground looks as good from underneath as it does from on top, whistled Gopher. Yes, sirree. Tigger expressed his gratitude that downing through the air was just as splendiferous as upping. The item for which I am indeed most thankful, announced Al in his most dignified voice, is that I always remember in the nick of time to land on my feet and not on my face. I am grateful just for the chance to be grateful, rumbled Eeyore, if that's all right with everyone that is. Everyone agreed that it was indeed quite all right with them. Kanga and Little Roo said they were grateful for each other at exactly the same time. And at that very moment, Christopher Robin arrived quite out of breath and said, I'm terribly sorry to be so late, Pooh Bear. What exactly are we all doing up here? We're having a feast and telling each other what we are grateful for, said Pooh. Then Pooh surveyed the blanket and realized that there wasn't a single smackerel of anything left to eat. You missed the feast part, I'm afraid, he told Christopher Robin sadly. That's all right, laughed Christopher Robin. I could still do the other. Then he stood up straight and began to speak in a very grown-up voice. I'm very grateful for having the opportunity of finding you all here together so I can invite you to join me for Thanksgiving dinner. Thanksgiving dinner, exclaimed everyone all at once. What's that? Well... You all already know the most important part, laughed Christopher Robin. It's a special time when all the things we're grateful for throughout the year have their very own day to celebrate with us. What a nice idea, said Pooh with a satisfied smile. I'd like to thank whoever thought of it. You thought of it all by your lonesome, buddy bear, shouted Tigger as he slapped Pooh happily on the back. Ah, said Pooh with a grin, the dinner part did sound familiar, and you did mention... Dinner? Pooh asked carefully. All you can eat, and more, Christopher Robin assured him. Isn't it wonderful, said Pooh, as he rubbed his tummy, that Thanksgiving dinner is something we're all warmed up for. Everyone agreed that it was indeed quite wonderful. Another thing, said Pooh quietly, to be so very grateful for. <laughs>